Hi everyone, this is Patricia. Hoping you guys are having a good summer. As for me, I am currently in the UK, hanging out with Aaron and his family, and uh, just enjoying myself, having a nice relaxing time, especially since I've been going through four long years at school and just constantly working on assignments and a whole bunch of other things. But uh, yeah, I'm just being able to finally be able to come to Europe for the very first time and see what the country has to offer. And I cannot wait to uh, be able to spend time with my wonderful sweetheart and his wonderful family. So what you're about to listen to are the episode recaps of Season 3B of the 2019 Disney Channel animated series Amphibia, which we talked about on Aaron and Patricia. For those who don't know, Aaron and Patricia is a weekly podcast series where we talk about various pop culture news, and we've been watching Season 3 of Amphibia. But that's not the only show we talk about. We've also been covering the Disney Channel animated series The Owl House, as well as the Disney Channel slash Pixar animated series Monsters at Work. So, I just want to let you know that there are major spoilers ahead. If you have not seen Amphibia, then go check it out on Disney+, Plus, Disney Now, or wherever that you can to support the official release. If you want to have a full, detailed discussion of Amphibia, then we did an almost two-and-a-half-hour-long podcast on Casual Chats, where myself... Aaron, Jim Bevan, Taylor, a.k.a. Y-Boy from Toon Grin, and Elijah, a.k.a. Not-So-Average Fangirl, talked about our favorite characters, episodes, moments, and why we love the show so much. But if you have caught up, then sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, um, basically, I mean, I can sum up um, the two episodes like this, like... Uh, um, they find, oh, you know what is, I do apologize, everybody, so, you know, I I'm not very good with character names, and especially ones that don't tend to turn up very much in, uh, in, in episodes, so, uh, we basically get the, you know, the character who, uh, trained, you know, uh, Lou, you know, uh, sorry, Anne and, uh, Sprague, and, uh, and, and, uh, you know, uh, into, like, in fighting, do you know that character? What's his name? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was it, like, um... Uh, Antonio or something like that. Uh, yeah, Antonio. Yeah, Antonio. So uh, uh, Antonio yeah. basically returns in this episode, and he basically got himself like a band of merry men. So basically, he's Rob Robin Hood at this point. Yeah, he, he basically uh, turns into the Robin Hood of the of the episode and basically where we saw that he still has that same mindset about like every man for himself because he came from like a rough background where, you know, he grew up in the streets and uh, you know, he had to deal with a lot of betrayal and, you know, he basically took that with him that even though that he's already built a really strong relationship with this group of other people who are trying to fight for similar causes that he was easily going to like abandon them pretty quickly, but then Anne was telling um you know Antonio that you can't do that because you know they counted on you they relied on you they they looked up to you as a hero and that's when he decided to change his mind when um you know King Andreas the the robots captured them and they were going to bring them you know over to jail and so you know he was able to become a hero and he was able to save everybody and then eventually he told Anne well I'm going to help you with the resistance once uh, you know that happens so you know there we go another person and another group of people that we can be able to say, okay, now we're starting to build up that resistance. So, yeah, yeah um... but this is, this is the thing. I think this is the theme of, like, you know, these two episodes. It's kind of like, you know, uh, I think they realize that uh, the um, Andreas is probably, like, in his army, is probably, like, you know, a bit overpowered. So, like, uh, they're having to, like, add in more people to kind of, like, you know, you know bring, you know, kind of, like, make it look like it's going to be a fair fight. From the looks of it, so which uh... I mean, you you have you have robots and you have mind controlled creatures. I mean, the the, the odds are stacked against them. Exactly, yeah. But on top of that, they have the core as well, and like uh, you know, they have like other people who are kind of like you know not willingly like wanting to. Also, on top of that, they also mentioned that there's other people who have actually you know uh, sided with Andreas, even though like uh, they don't particularly like him all that much. So yeah, like... they're siding with him because I mean, let's be honest. I mean. He's the one who took over everything, and I'm sure that they're doing this out of fear. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, in regards to Antonio, like, uh, joining the resistance, I think, like, you know, it's, uh, that, I mean, that, that's, that, that, there's that. And so, um, I got, you know, here's the thing, like, you know, whether Antonio joined the resistance or not, I wouldn't really care all that much, really. 
Like it's just it so I mean, I, I mean, I can understand like um, Beatrice, uh, you know, Captain Grimes' sister joining the resistance because that was going to be huge. And I can understand like the the Newts from, um, you know, from New, uh, you know, from basically the the land of Ulm, you know, and getting the prophecy that would have been huge as well. So I mean, I I can, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, it was definitely a little bit of cleanup because you know we were introduced to this character early on in the series, and he was the one who taught Anne how to do sword fighting and she knows how to do that throughout the course of the series she was able to take out sasha and give her that scar so i had a really strong feeling that he was going to play a, a bit of a role uh later on in the series yeah and uh, then the second one is that uh, we get to reintroduce the domino 2 and uh, by the way it did produce like a very sentimental moment where you know domino 2 does remember Anne, and uh and apparently the you know, for plot convenience uh, the uh, domino 2 is now the alpha moth of like these group of moths uh, who were captured by andreas and now they've been set three and uh, now because of that they are now siding with the resistance and uh, now they can use them for air def you know air, air you know uh, support and defense so, yeah, yeah. yeah there's a... uh, especially since uh, you know they desperately needed it because their 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 ways of transportation has been really limited. Mm -hmm. So they needed that for like you know the air, you know you know when they're fighting the air and stuff like that. So obviously they're building up to like make the uh, the battle as epic as possible. So that's that's where they're going to. And uh, you know credit to Matt Braley, like you know he um, he I think he had to put this in to kind of like make it a little bit more like you know it's going to be an inter more interesting fight I guess. But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, especially when we saw in like Avatar where. Um, you know, they were trying to gather up all the people to take down Fire Lord Ozai during the, the, the eclipse. You know, we had the, the Water Tribe, we had the Swamp Benders, we had a few members of, um, you know, Jet's group, and we had a few members of the, the village that uh, Katara was able to help, um, you, know, um, you know, get rid of the Fire Nation. So, you know, it was kind of like a build-up towards that, where they're probably eventually going to, like, meet up together, go over the plans of how they're going to be able to take down Andreas. They're probably saying, we need the Calamity Box so we can be able to get our full powers again, and not knowing that, um, you know, Marcy's being controlled by the core so yeah there's definitely going to be a build up to this and what matt said on twitter that this was the last fun episode starting next week this is when things really get serious yeah which i'm looking forward to actually so yeah me too cool anyway um let's talk about amphibia for a second because holy guacamole um we are now at the point where the world is now being invaded by a, a robot frog army and uh it's pretty much the, uh, we might just say it's the worst case scenario, like, you know, uh, yep. California is going to be under the control of this, uh, of a, of a, you know, um, uh, Darcy dictatorship, pretty much a Darcy ship, if you will. Uh, but, no. uh, <laughs> but, um, so, um, the first episode we go into is you know, basically the, um, they are managed together to, uh, basically, f you know, force an attack on, uh, on Andreas, but they realize that the newts, the frogs, and the toads have all basically been in each other's throats for 900 years. So, the idea is, is that Anne, uh, puts in a bunch of team building exercises to try and get them all to work together and, uh, try and, you know, you know, glue them all apart. That doesn't work. They end up trying to get some weapons to um, to basically you know, go off and have a war and start killing each other inside the uh, inside there, uh, Anne uh, uses her stone powers and makes, breaks the whole thing up and tells them all to basically start working together. And that's basically a, a summation of the episode, pretty much. Yeah. So. so I mean, we we had a feeling from the very beginning when they were gathering up these groups of newts and toads and frogs that they definitely weren't going to be getting along and they need to in order for them to stop King Andreas and so we have all of these exercises that Anne is trying to do it's like we have these trust exercises or we have these exercises of tying in a knot and uh, and unfortunately they're still arguing with each other we have um, Tritonio arguing with Beatrix and we have them arguing with the frogs so yeah it, it, things are not turning out very well and it isn't until Anne when she says you know i thought that we were going to all get along i guess i was wrong and she, you know she <laughs> basically uses her um um 
her powers from the calamity box to prove a point and then they realize well i guess we do have to work together and so they come up with a plan of you know them fighting off against the robot army while a small group of people are able to sneak into king andreas's castle and try to get the calamity box and rescue marcy so that's where the, that episode ends and then it goes over to the next episode where the plans come into fruition mm-hmm so um, we then basically go into the war. So like uh, they end up uh, you know attacking the, the the castle, and so that ends up going on in there. Um, Andreas it ends up at the point where Andreas has to step in and start trying to fight them all all by himself. Which uh, so that was a pretty scary moment in that regard. But while that's all going on, um, Anne, Sasha, and uh, are, are basically all our heroes uh, sneak into the side of the castle, and uh, they um, end up fighting um, some of the uh, you know, some of the other characters who basically now got yeah, to you're, these, you're, uh, yeah, you're, they they had to fight off against Olivia and Yuan. Yeah, Yuan. So who had uh, basically mind controlled at that point, but uh, they end up having this like this uh, other fight. But then they realize that they have to work together again in order to basically fight them, and uh, then. They get the power collars off, and uh, then they uh, are back to normal. But uh, before yeah, they, they, before... they they did that, and they were able to, um, you know, free them. And they, you know, the only way that Anne and Sasha were able to do it was they were able to do this duo dance that, to kick the callers out of the way so that they can back, get back to normal. Yeah, but before they, you know, they can try and you know stop Anne and Sasha from continuing on because they say that, uh, you know, uh, you know, Marcy is not the same person that he thought he was and then they just said neither are we but they don't realise what they're in for. So they think they found the calamity box and able to recover it but it's actually just an illusion and uh, then uh, Darcy makes her appearance and uh, yeah. captures everybody and uh, effectively, you know, uh, gets the invasion going after capturing everyone and uh, so now basically they're back in california and the invasion has begun and everyone's in panic so yeah uh, and 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 you know we ha- we have to talk about the scene in which when sasha was talking about that you know they she doesn't know if their friendship with marcy is ever going to be the same again because as you know that marcy had brought them over to amphibia on purpose because she knew that she was moving away to a a different town and she didn't want to be separated from Anne and sasha and so um you know with everything that they had to go through she is just genuinely upset about like can we able to trust her again after everything that she's done and so Anne was basically saying well i know this is going to be hard but you know i'm sure that uh, we can be able to you know work around it i mean especially since we saw in the beginning of that episode that you know marcy was interested in showing them this movie and then Anne and sasha weren't really paying attention to it they even fell asleep during the good part and Marcy was watching it by herself. So there was a bit of neglectfulness in terms of like what their friendship is. And it, I guess it's true. You know, we have Marcy, who's like the klutzy one, Sasha, who's the dominant one. And Anne is, was kind of like dumb, where she wasn't like really trying very hard. And she didn't exactly like was the um, the smart one. So, yeah, there, there, there was like, you know, their, their friendship was kind of like put together in a haphazardly way. But, but it wasn't until when they sat down and was like, wow, you know, can we really trust Marcy after everything that she's done? But we saw that Anne and Sasha were able to have a closer relationship because of everything that had been happening. So can they do that with Marcy? Well, I mean, they won't be able to find out right away because, as you know, Marcy was taken over control by the core. So that leaves it into that. And then we have this moment in which when Anne was convincing Darcy that, hey, if you kill me, then, you know, maybe the box wouldn't work because they have no idea about the true nature of the gemstones in the Calamity box. So she tricks him in saying, hey, you can't kill me because as long as I have this, then maybe the power will go away. So you have to keep me alive. And they're like, okay, we'll keep you alive, but we're taking you over to California and that's... That's when chaos happens, and we'll find out about that next week. Yeah, and so, um, mind you, like in regards to like their friendship, like I'm pretty. Sh- uh, it's interesting to see what direction they're going to go in, because like uh, maybe like when it's all said and done, Mike, uh, you know, uh, maybe it will be the fact that uh, you know Marcy ends up kind of going out of state anyway, and uh, maybe she'll feel guilty about all the di- all the damage that she's caused. Like, mm-hmm. uh, so that might be the way that it ends, but. Uh, who knows? Um, it's uh, we'll see where that all goes. But uh, right now, like, uh, I mean, have you seen the promo 
for the next episode. I have to episode. the promo. So, yeah, and by the way, um, you know, uh, shout out to my Briley, actually, because uh, he is doing prime time on Saturday evening. Like, uh, so, yes, uh, that's right. I'm so excited so for him. Air- yeah, I am really excited for him. So instead of airing around the mornings like it usually would, it's actually airing on Saturday night at 8 o'clock p.m. So we'll probably uh, have to catch it a little bit later than we usually do. But yeah, I mean, the opportunity to have a 48-minute special, which is like part one of two of the last episode of Amphibia. And now uh, millions of kids and adults are able to watch it and maybe gather together to see it. So I'm really excited for Matt. It's going to be a big television event i have to say it's been building up to this point pretty much yeah. so uh yeah uh, so really excited for him saturday uh eight o'clock uh on uh on disney channel uh coming up next mm-hmm. week so we're definitely looking forward to all of that and uh, by the way owl house as far as we're aware is uh, still going to be airing the same same you know the uh the same block so uh, we will be able to catch that you know it's uh at uh, the same point so we will still give uh spoiler sections for that but if we don't catch amphibia on that on that particular weekend we'll definitely catch up at some point so. Yeah, we will. We'll mm-hmm. catch it at some point. Yeah, but yeah, I, I think that the buildup that they're doing um, for this huge war that's happening, and we even saw this in the promos. But by the way, before we get into that, the little cameo that was uh, shown in the first f- frame of the trailer, where a particular character from the Disney Channel in the '90s was actually shown as a cameo. It's confirmed by Disney. Pepper Ann's going to be ever reboot. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, uh, Beberan is uh, a c- cameos in uh, in the promo uh, from uh, to to the next episode. I don't think she's going to be doing anything significant in th- in the show. No, so. no, no. It, it's just it's just a quick cameo. I mean, even Matt Braley said that um, he was a huge fan of Pepperan growing up. That was like one of his favorite shows, and so I guess it made a lot of sense on why Pepperan was like in the background. And, th- and you know, not only that, but this is adult Pepperan, the one that we saw in the last episode of the series. Spoilers, by the way. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's great. That is great continuity right there. So I'm I. Yeah, so basically, um, you know, going into that, we have now finally, you know, uh, Mr. X and um, Anne's parents coming together, and now they're going to be fighting off against King Andreas's army. So then we have this confrontation with Sasha and Darcy, and who knows where that's going to go into. So, yeah, th- 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 this coming week is going to be huge for Amphibia. Yeah. Um, interesting to note as well is that, uh, you know, Mr. X is uh, looks like he's going to be teaming up with with uh, everybody on Earth to basically take down, you know, Andreas and uh, the um, and the core. So uh, interesting to see where what direction that goes in. So uh, hopefully the U.S. government can provide uh, a little bit of assistance there. You know, if uh, you know if they can do. So uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess it does make a lot of sense because if you recall when you know Anne was getting into the portal and you know going back into Amphibia, and then Anne's parents basically go over to Mister X saying, "We have a long story to tell, so sit back and get comfortable." So I'm sure that Mister X is pretty much caught up with everything. Yeah. Right then, um, let's get all in, shall we? All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, so it starts right. off with a very interesting cold open where we're going back because, you know, we've been noticing that in which, like, we have a flashback to how it was before they got into Amphibia. And so, basically, it shows off Anne, Sasha, and Marcy just causing a whole bunch of trouble, like, playing K-pop and releasing a bunch of puppies. And basically, you know, the principal just calls them in and saying, like, you know, you need to, um, you know worry about this and you need to focus on your leadership skills and for Anne basically you know the principal tells her you need to be able to know who you are without Sasha and without Marcy because you know you just seem to be wanting to take the easy way out when in reality it's going to be a lot more difficult than that and you need to write an essay on who are you Mm mm-hmm so, um, I mean, in regards to this episode, I mean, first of all, like, uh, this um, is a, a huge episode. Like, you know, it's uh, a lot of a lot gets packed into this. And uh, it, it goes in various other perspectives as well. Like, you know, obviously, you know, the Boon Joys now are pretty much, you know, these special agents now that have been put together by Mr. Rax, which I think is a pretty cool thing. I mean, that, the, the fact that they were able to get prepared just as quickly was just very impressive. Yeah, I can probably imagine it, you know, uh, with that. So, mind you, it's cartoon world, so of course they can, they can do that. Of course uh, they can. Yeah, and so... Um, by the way, you know, Mr. X actually has a turn in this. Like, you know, he now realizes that, you know, we're all in danger and he needs to, he needs to, he needs to save I, the I world. I guess the talk that the Boon Choice did must have been really elaborate where they were able to say, like, okay, 
I believe you, a bunch of frogs and newts and toads are in this particular universe and the newts are basically going to be taking over pretty soon. So let's take a couple of weeks to get ourselves ready with weapons and gadgets and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, mm. that's cool. Yeah. So, um, Anne obviously, you know, uh, you know, discovers the, you know, obviously, um, you know, uh, has the power of, you know, he's able to control the power of the stones a lot better than she was before. I mean, obviously, she like she expels it in the fight uh, with uh, with Andreas, but uh, you know, with King Andreas, he, uh, he, he basically he's um, completed his arc at this point because uh, he's now uh, re- he he gets uh, introduced to the uh, the the secret message. That was uh, get, that Sprig found, and then he realized uh, through uh, from Mister X that uh, it was actually a, 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 a letter written by Leaf, you know, apologizing for the fact that she took the calamity box, yeah. and that she still wanted to be friends with uh, with with with, uh, with Andreas. So Andreas, um, you know, he was still kind of like having being unsure about all of that was going on by you know by the core. And so I think he still had that. But so that was the thing that kind of like turned him over, you know, as the point to that, you know, the core itself pretty much had to kind of like hijack Andreas' mind to kind of keep him fighting. But uh, exactly. then, you know, he just, uh, he overcame it. And uh, one, one thing that we discovered is that, uh, you know, Andreas, to, to, to keep himself alive for like, you know, um, thousands thousand years. of years, he's ended up kind of like, you know, to make, to make cybernetically enhancing himself. It, it kind of reminds me of like the... Um, you know, the, the general from uh, Helsing in which, you know, in order for him to surpass, you know, everything that happened between like World War Two and the present day, which was like, you know, over 50, 60, 70 years later, mm. um, you know, he basically just became like a cyborg where, you know, he was able to keep himself alive with um, a cybernetic body while at the same time trying to see like, yeah, we're going to have Nazi vampires taking over the world because we failed to do it the first time and now we're going to do it the second time. Mm-hmm. So, um, so there's those elements in there, and uh, then uh, Sasha basically completes, you know, somewhat her arc, I guess you could say that. So, you know, she's sort of like gone through this, like, you know, redemption of like, you know, trying to save Marcy. And uh, by the way, um, Grime helps out Sasha, but uh, he ends up, you know, taking the worst of it because he ends up getting his arm sliced off. You remember that rumor that was going around on Reddit where they thought that Sasha was going to be losing a, a, a body part or Anne was going to be losing a body part, but no, it was Grime who did it. Yeah, mind you, like. Well, the, the idea is that uh, all of them are like, are, like eyes lost, and so yeah, they like, thought Sasha was going to lose an eye. Yeah, exactly. They thought that Sasha was going to be losing an eye. They thought that Anne was going to be losing her arm, and they thought that Marcy was going to be losing her leg. Yeah. And by the way, like, uh, one of these things, like, at one point, we actually thought that Sasha was actually killed at one point. Like, yeah, yeah. Like she made, a, there was a huge slash on her back from the core scythe weapon. Yeah, so, but, uh, you know, she managed to get up and actually, you know, cut the cut the tether that, so, you know, was attached to him, which, uh, you know, you know, I'm really surprised if this core was so advanced, like, you know, you wouldn't think, you like, it would be able to wildly connect to itself, like, every <laughs> this thing, but, yeah, uh, so, no. <laughs> yeah, so much for being, like, advanced You know what, that, that's where Plankton in the SpongeBob SquarePants movie actually made sense with those buckets like at least they were like had antennas on top of them and like <laughs> were able to you know be uh, wirelessly controlled and like you know it's uh you know uh, unlike marcy who basically had to like be wise the entire thing the entire time yeah yeah and um also you know kudos for Anne who was like you know struggling to get her powers intact especially when she was running out of it when fighting against andreas and then you have the family members who decided okay we're gonna play off the k-pop music we're gonna wish you you know the best of uh good luck and saying that you can be able to do this and then she got her powers again and she was able to just kick a whole bunch of ass and then finally you know she was able to just like cut through andreas like butter mm-hmm so, um, so a lot got wrapped up in this. Uh, by the way, and also uh, there was a bit of a, well, mind you, the the uh, story about uh, the herons, obviously, you know, eating, you know, uh, the the parents of uh, Sprig and uh, and uh, Polly. Polly. So there there was that that was also addressed as well. And so they'd also be captured by uh, Andreas and be used as weapons. And so, uh, but then they realized that he was about to uh, ca- capture, uh, well, about to kill, you know, Anne's family as well. So they weren't going to have enough of it anymore. They uh, basically rode like a reconstructed. Frobo uh, that Apollo had reconstructed early before in the episode and uh, you know they went through their arc as well where they you know they overcame you know the fact you know these uh, 
you know, these creatures, you know, basically killed, you know, their their, fa- their family. Yeah, and then so. they brought back the hunter dance that we saw in the first season. Oh, yeah, that was that was a good throwback. That was that. great for the robot again. And also, you know, I know that this is not a big shock to anybody, but yes, we do eventually learn that Leaf is actually a long descendant of the planters. We knew this from the beginning. Yeah, we we did. So I think, I mean, it was obvious at the point when, you know, when she did when she did the first dance. And obviously, she looks like, she looks like a spitting image of break. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So we knew from like a thousand years that, you know, eventually that, um, you know, Leaf had hidden the Calamity Box on Earth. We knew that eventually, you know, she was able to settle in towards where the frogs were and being able to just like, you know, start off, you know, the home where eventually the planters lived and she was able to open up the, um, you know, the, the, cr- the card where she was growing the vegetables and then she had a family of her own. And then the last thing that she did was write the letter to King Andrew. And I think that King Andreas was able to realize that, you know, even though that, um, you know, Leaf had long since left uh, Newtopia, that, you know, she really still cared about Andreas because they were still friends even after all these years later. And uh, unfortunately, it was like too late for Andreas because at the moment where he started to, to surrender, he, his body was destroyed. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think, uh, by the way, a very good closer, I think, for all the the, the, the storylines that we've had. But uh, unfortunately, like, uh, well, you know, they did get Marcy. I don't know how to feel about them getting Marcy back. Like, all right. It, so, yeah, let's let's talk about that. So Marcy basically went through a very similar plot structure that Mabel did in Gravity Falls, in which, you know, she was trapped in the mind that the core wanted her to see. Basically, how Mabel was, like, trapped by Bill Cipher is like, OK, we're going to get you everything you want. We're going to get all this candy we're gonna get all these boy bands we're gonna have you be like the queen of the castle everything is great in marcy's case we're gonna have you solve all these puzzles which by the way one of the puzzles was a millennium puzzle from Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> it took yugi eight years to solve that one but it probably took marcy like five minutes i'm, sure, f- that, I'm sure that was a job at him <laughs> yeah go figure anyway uh, so we have that and we also have andre uh you know a uh, king um adriel uh, showing off the library akin to like beauty and the beast is like all of this is your and it's magical and crap. And then finally, we I kind of think, I kind of, yeah, I kind of think they were making a reference to something in there. It does feel like Beauty and Beast now that he mentioned it. Yeah, exactly. It's like you have, uh, you know, King Adriel just basically going over to Marcy, and it's like the knowledge is yours. This is what you wanted. And then finally, we have uh, this big, huge open world where Marcy's dressed up like some sort of RPG character with Anne and Sasha, and they're basically saying we get to do whatever you want, BFF. And you know, she notices that something is wrong because she already knew that Anne and Sasha don't exactly want her to basically follow the, the, her the, This feels, I, mean, I was talking about this before, this feels like a callback to a particular, I think it was just a League Unlimited uh, episode where um, they, Superman is like taken over by this plant that was planted in by, I think it was, uh, I can't remember which villain it was, but uh, basically what it does, it plants into the mind of Superman that uh, he that Krypton did not explode, his father was wrong and that you know, he has this family now on, on there. Yeah, yeah, this was also a very similar plot to Batman the Animated Series pretends to dream in which when you know when Batman wakes up he's Bruce Wayne Batman never existed his parents are still alive the love of his life is still there his life is content and happy but no it's the scarecrow who's planting all of this stuff into him yeah so um yeah it feels like a big callback to like some of the DC stories that we've heard about you know pretty much in uh, in there so that was kind of cool to get another reference to all of that in that intentional or not and uh, so um but then so we go through all this uh, but then again i'm a bit you know like uh, they do this whole thing of like you know they where they get marcy back where they just kind of like just like cry over her and then all of a sudden she just wakes up and she's fine yeah i, I don't know how I, they I feel mean, about that i mean they even mentioned like when marcy eventually says i'm not going to follow you anymore and then king adriel controlled by the core says you're going to be trapped in darkness for the rest of your life so i thought that maybe like that was going to lead up to the two-parter in mm-hmm. which like you know they they see Marcy down, but they can't resurrect her yet because she's trapped in the darkness now. Yeah, it would have made more sense. It's kind of like, uh, well, hang on a second. 
back and you're like, you know, maybe we can power, maybe we'll have to power up this core thing again and like, you know, but try and find her in like, in, you know, the, the, the core that's in there. Although maybe they probably have to do, have to do something like that. I thought that, that would have been interesting. That would have been interesting. It's like, you know, we destroyed the core, but Marcy is still in there. Yeah. So we'll have to go back into the core and find her and then resurrect, then resurrect her and, and so that'll put her back into her body. Yeah. Or something like that. Like, yeah, that, that would be interesting to do, but no, like, uh, I, I'm interested to see why, I, I want to hear why Marcy just kind of woke up and was Marcy when this entire time basically she's been like the minds of like you know generations of people well, I, can't, I, I don't know but again uh it's not over yet i mean we thought it was over it made it look like it was over like king andreas has reformed himself and was completely destroyed and even though that he's still alive he knows that what he did was wrong the core is destroyed and everything is saved but no of course not the core is crawling away in its one helmet trying to escape making it look like it was fine then they return to amphibia thinking that everything is going to go back to normal that they're going to settle everything down and everything's going to be good but of course not then we have this huge climactic um reveal that there's going to be this huge red asteroid that's about to crash into the earth yeah uh they bring in link from majora's mask <laughs> <laughs> it's actually kind of funny because i was actually looking at something on twitter and it just so happens that next week there just so happens to be a red moon that's going to be happening and then matt braley jokes and saying like ah i planned this all along <laughs> yeah it's just kind of like uh then I see that, and this is where we get the uh, the the crossover with uh, turning red. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's actually kind of funny that you mentioned that. It's like, it, it, it does kind of like feel similar. And by the way, this is great uh, foreshadowing because that was one of the prophecies that Leaf saw in which like, you know, she saw that, you know, Andreas was going to be controlling the earth and Andreas was going to be following into the core. And then the last thing that she saw was that meteor crashing into earth. Yeah. Also, something else as well, like, you know, that the core doesn't look like it's, you know, it doesn't look like it's fully dead. Like, you know, it said uh, that if you remember, like the, the thing sprouted legs, like the thing and crawled away. Yeah. Yeah. Out of all the things you would think that Amphibia would, re- would reference would be the thing. <laughs> Good grief. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that we'll just have to wait to see what happens. I mean, I mean, it, it did look like it was going to be like complete at this point. But no, we're probably going to get even more stuff about the core. And we're going to find out about how they're going to be able to stop this red asteroid. And then we're going to finally, you know, find, you know, see the conclusion of these characters once and for all. I mean, after this, Amphibia is done. Yeah. Let's talk about the season finale of Amphibia because, uh, oh boy, was this, uh, we, we, you know, this was up and down. We were crying. We were laughing. Good grief. This episode had everything as well. And so, uh, I mean, great, great way to finish Amphibia. I think we can all yeah. agree. Yeah. So, oh, absolutely. Um, it was, it was wonderful. Yeah. I mean, like, some people were like, you know, um, saying that, oh, you, this is just like, you know, um, this is turning, you know, Anne, you know, Sasha and like, you know, Marcy into, you know, the Powerpuff Girls for like, you know, <laughs> a, a few, a few scenes, which is like, uh, no, I think it's, uh, you know, given the fact you have something as crazy as the core, which, you know, like, I was thinking, how are they going to beat this thing? It's so, like, it was, uh, yeah. it was pretty cool that, you know, they managed to get those type of superpowers and they had that, like, uh, that whole anime fight with like all those monsters and everything. So uh, that was a that was a great way to 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 pile in, pretty much, and so, um, and also um, you know, uh, the the very end of that, I mean, they still even though they had all this this magic, they weren't able to like you know defeat the corp you know directly, and so um, they ended up in a situation where um, you know, they had to hand Anne over the uh, you know the um the the calamity crystals, and so she could like you know power up herself and uh, try and be able to beat it herself, but at the expense of herself. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I and also um, I just really love the costumes. Just the costumes were just so freaking cool when they were able to get the full powers of the gems from the calamity box. Yeah, they're they're, they're going to be at the comic con. Pretty much for the foreseeable future. Pretty much those costumes. I can just see them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and then also, um, you know, right before we get into that, uh, the the prophecy that Mother Ohm was mentioning and saying about like, oh, it's not a prophecy; it's more like a a favor or something like that. So we don't even know if it's actually gonna happen. So, uh, you know, but you know, still, yeah. I mean, do what you can, and then even she tells- then, I, I felt like, yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, it, it didn't really add too much to it. I mean, obviously the, uh, you know, the, the secret spell, I think obviously added a little bit more to it because, you know, you saw what it did to Anne, you know, in the, yes. in the aftermath and good grief. Like, you know, she was, uh, <laughs> she was not looking, she was not looking too well, 
You know, like... Oh, uh, man. Insert Spider-Man meme jokes. I don't feel so good. <laughs> so, um, she, you know, uses the crystals to... And by the way, uh, you know, Sprague tries to talk her out of it before she did it. And, uh, you know, it leads to, like, one of the sweetest moments is, like, you know, uh, oh, I, 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 you know, you've changed me for the better. And, uh, you know, and, you know, agrees. Like, you've changed me too. And uh, now she, she, instead of taking, like, the easy way of, like, trying to, like, you know, do something, she ends up taking the hardest thing, which is, like, you know, sacrificing her own life to basically save Amphibia. And uh, yeah, also, I, well, I mean, one that, other great line, a... one other great line before, you know, we even get to the defeating of the, of the, of the core is, like, you know, because, oh, are you going to use, you know, uh, Amphibia's greatest treasure against me? And uh, Anne says, no, this isn't Amphibia's greatest treasure. And, you know, and then all the characters come into screen. And like you know, it's like a you know that that's a great line in itself and a great way to end it. Pretty Absolutely, yes, and it, it just goes to show you that um, the 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 comments that um, re regarding about that you know the core or King Andreas is not the real villain of Amphibia. It's actually the greed and corruption, and that the girls are fighting for Amphibia's soul. So we saw that abundantly in that particular scene in which when Anne decides to make the ultimate sacrifice and she was able to defeat the core using the three gems and she was able to sacrifice her life for it. I mean, we, we came from a person who was just a goofball and who was self-centered and who didn't have a direction in life because she was dictated by what her friend said to somebody who is selfless and brave and determined to be able to save everybody, even at the cost of her own life. Mm -hmm. So, um, Anne dies, pretty much, you know, Anne yeah. dies, <laughs> like I say, it's so incredible to kind of, like, think about, and so, um, she ends up going to, like, uh, this, uh, this other world, which, uh, she's then, uh, confronted by what I think is, like, some kind of, like, uh, you know, uh, some, I, I can't remember exactly what they call it, but, uh... It's an, I know what that computer is. I know exactly no, what No, not the computer. Because... I, I know what the computer is, but, uh, like, what did they, like, what is the thing that Anne is actually talking to? Oh, the uh, Guardian. The Guardian, right. Okay, so, she ends up talking with the Guardian, which is, like, an old, uh, Apple iMac. <laughs> Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> An old Apple my iMac from like the late nineties and early two thousands. Yeah, like they think that's what the kids are all doing nowadays. You know, hello fellow kids. <laughs> uh so um so then um he transforms into uh Domino, which uh, is a more pleasable form for uh Zan to uh, you know relate with. And so uh then the you know the Guardian says that oh you're the first person ever in ten thousand years to take the power of the calamity box and use it for good. Which yeah, because, because yeah. if you remember that um, it was the Newts who owned it and every single one of them used the Calamity Box so that they can be able to take over worlds and universes to get resources so that they can be, make Newtopia a, a happier place. So yeah, they've had it this entire time and Anne was the first one who was not part of the Newts and who was able to use it for good. Mm -hmm. So um, the Guardian offers Anne a job. Of like you know being the you know, the person to you know guard you know uh, you know the uh, you know ev you know pretty much be basically be a god pretty much at this point and uh, so because uh, but uh, funnily enough that uh, Anne turns around to her and says well you no know, look every time I do something good I make like hundreds of other mistakes and uh, I still feel like I can do better if I if I go back down to earth and so uh, she ends up teaching the guardian that uh, you know I can still make myself better and uh, you know. Uh, uh, you know, but then she ends up, the Guardian ends up telling Anne that, you know, she's going to basically be dead in 78 years, which, uh, you know, is uh, probably not a good trade-off, I guess you could say. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, according to, like, one of the first drafts of the script posted by one of the writers, it was, uh, I believe it was, like, 78 years, 3 months, and 16 days. So we know exactly the detail of when Anne is going to die. Yeah, so, uh, by the way, a, a nice nod to, uh, to Hey Arnold, and that's, uh, that, you know, Anne is going to die at 91 years old, the same way that Arnold's family is going to all die at 91 yeah, years old. Yeah, that's right, yeah, where the, the, the family curse, yes. Mm -hmm, exactly. So, uh, Anne goes back down to Earth after convincing the Guardian that uh, she can still live a full life and, uh, you know, she'll be a better Guardian when she comes back. And, uh, yeah, then we get this, like, this, uh, tearful reunion of everybody, but, uh, the only thing about that is, is that, uh, the, um, the, the jewels from the Calamity Box are now, you know, thinned out, and so there's only enough power left, basically, to take them back to the human realm, and, uh, so, um, they have to have this tearful goodbye of all their friends from Amphibia, 
and uh, then they uh, they go off into the portal, and uh, that's uh, pretty much you know the end of the uh, of the adventure, pretty much. And uh, yeah, that, but, that, you know, that moment was just so unbelievably good. Like the fact that everybody was saying their last goodbyes. We have. Marcy saying goodbye to Olivia, Yunnan, and King Andreas, and Sasha and Grime broke down and cried, and we have Anne saying goodbye to the planters, and oh my god, that those that was so beautiful. Yeah, you know the Anne and the Anne and Sprig, you know, uh, you know goodbye is probably you know it was so well done, like you know like it was, it, 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 it was done twice, you know like uh, you know Sprig could not bear to be away from Anne because they're so close. And so uh, they got that one other moment, and uh, Anne actually hands over a sprig her phone uh, yes. for her to, you know, so that he can continue, like you know, building the book, so, you know, for all the adventures that they had, and uh, so he can she he, he continues to do that, and you know, continues to keep their, you know, their legacy alive, pretty much. Oh, uh, yeah, that was that was beautifully done, and w when when uh, Sprig came over to Anne for one final hug, and then we have that beautiful transition, which, uh, by the way, was animated by Disney animator Hyung Min Lee, who also worked on Ryan the Last Dragon and Frozen 2 and um, Encanto and various other um, Disney films, so, yeah, that, that scene was, like, really well done. I thought it was James Baxter who animated that scene, but no, but uh, seriously, just beautifully well done, and then when Sprig tells and one last time sprang against the world. I that was it. I was done. Mm -hmm. So um, we then get uh, so the first scene that we see after the the goodbyes is uh, nine months later in Amphibia, and uh, Polly is now a fully grown frog. <laughs> Wow, that growth spurt was so fast. Like, a few months where we had from season one through season two, that's when she finally got her legs. And then at the end of, uh, you know, Sasha, Marcy, and Anne's adventure, she finally grows her first hair. So it's like, you know, she shot right up. It's like rivaling Goku in terms of, like, his growth spurt from, like, the 23rd Budokai Martial Arts Tournament where Goku was, like, really, really small and then he just shot right up like a few years later it was just unbelievable yeah and uh, it looks like andreas has decided to settle for uh, you know a simple life in uh, and also he's going blind too as well that's one yeah. thing i was noticing so um he decided to uh, just uh, have basically farm with his uh, robotic uh, you know uh, minions pretty much and uh, he's just uh, going to do that for the until his demise and by the way he's actually turning down uh, any more you know cybernetic uh, you know uh, enhancements like he's uh, basically you know accepted his face pretty much at this point so Exactly, yeah. So he's basically just um, writing the wrongs that he did uh, and also what the rest of his family had done and you know, how, um, you know, Amphibia turned out. And he decides that he's going to be planting, um, you know, the greens that were decimated from the attacks and he's able to, you know, amend his way. So that was actually pretty nice. And we get to see... Um, you know, characters such as, like, poor Loggle was not able to keep his muscles, and uh, Maddie was able to expand her potions. We saw Mrs. Croker being able to become buffed up, uh, and uh, we saw Hop Pop and Sylvia together, and they're growing avocados, and Sprague is continuing with his jur journal and, you know, tracking down all the creatures that he was able to find, and that little mural that he has in the background of, like, all the things that, they're, that uh, he collected and that he saved, like, there's... Oh my gosh, there's so many little details there. There, You know, he kept the leaf that Anne had in her hair. He kept, um, you know, a lot of pictures of their adventures together. There's even, like, words that um, is actually part of the Amphibia theme song. It's... It's it's great, and then finally we get to see the reveal of the statue. Yeah, so um, also uh, yeah, we get the reveal of the statue, and but then on top of that, we also get uh, uh, Ivy uh, coming to you know tackle um, you know Sprague in uh, the in a typical fashion, and uh, so but then uh, we get the news that uh, they've discovered a new continent, which basically has never been seen by either Newt, uh, Toad, or Frog. So um, this leaves the possibility for a spin-off. Uh, potentially for uh, Sprig, Ivy, and maybe even Polly, and uh, maybe a few other people too. You know, like, uh, so uh, that that's going to be really exciting if, uh, you know, they decide to give, uh, you know, Amphibia, like, you know, a spin-off show. So, like, you know, it, le it leaves that open too. And uh, But then, right after that, we get 10 years later, and uh, we get to see um, uh, Anne, uh, Marcy, and Sasha as adults, and uh, see what happens after those 10 years. 
Yeah. So, yeah. It, it was such a great reunion seeing the girls grown up and 23 years old. We get to see uh, Marcy's hair has grown. Sasha cut her hair and uh, we get to see what they're up to. You know, Marcy uh, does web comics and Sasha's a psychiatrist and they're going over to see Anne for her birthday, which it's, it's actually funny. Somebody even pointed this out uh, on Reddit that they're celebrating her birthday on the anniversary of the frog vasion, which means that it was technically the birthday of her new reincarnated body when you know she was like when she was killed off and then you know she had the um, the the copy body so i thought that that was actually really interesting mm -hmm. so um in the end uh marcy is basically doing web comics and uh, mm -hmm. sasha is now counseling ki kids from what we can see yep. and uh, you know uh, and um now uh, um Anne has a has a frog exhibit at the museum and, yeah, uh, so, Anne yeah. is a herpetologist, and she is uh, working at this um, great exhibit over at the Aquarium at the Pacific, which is a real location in Long Beach, California. And then we see her showing off the South American pink tree frog to a bunch of kids, and then she says that she named it Sprig, and we see the all, the details of the exhibit where it says get lost of amphibia and we get to see sections of frogs toads newts alms and it all looks like the stuff from amphibia and there was even like stuff on the wall which represents the gems it it's really well done mm -hmm. so um yeah i mean like it's um that is, that is basically the end of Amphibia, pretty much. Like, well, you know, we, everything... we, we, we even get to see, you know, I mean, well, we get to hear um, the last thing that Anne says about, like, you know, change can be hard, but it's what we need to, we can be able to grow. And even if we get separated, we'll still be able to find ourselves together at the end. And I thought that that was, like, a brilliant way to end things off. I mean, it's right up there with As Told by Ginger in terms of, like, its ending and its message about, like, change and growing up and being able to, um, you know, tackle in life the way it is. And, yeah, just everything about it was just, like, beautifully done. And then we get to see the extended credits where we get to, like, flash back into all the places that we knew of Amphibia and then finally the new picture of the three girls together, which... You know, it also ends off with some tie letters, which says complete. So, yeah, that's... Wow, that was a great way to end it off. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know if anyone can notice, like, our voices are starting to kind of, like, go at the moment. So, I think, uh, you know, we're... Uh... But, uh, you know, like, just as the last thing, you know, Amphibia, I mean, if you really want our overall thoughts on it, like, uh, the um, podcast over at Old School Lane for the casual chats is uh, up for, for everyone to see. So, uh, we'll uh, definitely, uh, you know, if you want to check out our further thoughts on that, then definitely do that. But uh, I think uh, for both of us right now, I think uh, we need to rest our voices, and uh, I think, uh, you know, we need to enjoy, you know, Patricia's birthday. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyway. Yes, indeed. But yeah, seriously, go go listen to that podcast. It's uh, almost two and a half hours long, and we had a lot of fun talking about Amphibia, so please uh, check it out. Okay. All right, everybody. Uh, we promise you a full episode uh, next week, but until then, take care. Well, I mean, well, hold on, hold on. Whoa. Before we go, we have to tease one more thing. Okay. Our Pixar stuff. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, uh, before, I mean, we go, um, we are going to be building up to Lightyear, uh, the next Pixar film, which is going to be releasing. And so, we are going to be doing another bunch of Pix minis. So, uh, we are going to be picking off from where we left off from the last 25, and we're going to be doing the next 25. So. Yep. We are, and uh, yeah, we're going to start things off with uh, Partysaurus Rex, which is uh, one of the Toy Story tunes, so we'll be talking about that when we start off Pix Minis again. Cool. But until then, everybody, um, we will see you then, and uh, we'll see you for the next Aaron and Patricia, So, uh, and also we'll be seeing you for King's Tide as well, which is going to be a pretty uh, amazing episode, I think we can all say. so. Absolutely. Cool. Take care, everybody. Have a good week, and we'll see you later. Bye, everyone.